thank you. Uh, well, first, uh, when I look at the title, of this, uh, of this session, it immediately came to me that we are going to discuss uh, the Euro and the Eurozone. Because this is the driver of um, integration. This is the driver that would um, uh, pull the Europe towards uh, some kind of uh, union, political union. I agree that it's hard to believe that uh, anything close to federation or even confederation will be produced in our lifetime. And what is after our lifetime? Well, I, I really don't know. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to say I don't care, but uh, since uh, I have a grandson uh, recently, so I start caring about what, is, what will happen then. But, um, but certainly, this is, this is the Eurozone and the future of Euro um, uh, that is at the core of our discussion about uh, the speed, dynamics, reversal, maybe, collapse, or success of integration. Um, let me give you the perspective of a non-Eurozone uh, non country, Poland, um, and also uh, to explain myself, um, I have always been um, mm, a proponent of a view that Poland should not rush into the euro. As uh, well, we thought ourselves as a stable country, uh, contrary to the eurozone. Um, but recently, I have sort of <clears throat> modified my view. And I'm not going to talk about uh, Poland, uh, and of course I'm not going to represent the view of, uh, of the government of my country, but I will offer some remarks on how we see the Eurozone, uh, looking back from 2007 onwards and now. Well, first, we realize that all the talk about the collapse and disruption of the Eurozone is nonsense. As long as we have the European Central Bank, we are not going to have a collapse of the Eurozone. The Central Bank is there to preserve the currency. If necessary, if necessary to break all the written rules, but if the if the political will will there be for the euro to preserve, well, we, it's, it's like having a national central bank. A national central bank can always prevent a bankruptcy, a default in domestic currency. Well, unless you, you choose to do it, like Russia in 1998. What happens in Greece, sorry, well, euro, you realized, was not the Greek currency, in short. But so why is it sort of attractive for a non-eurozone country like Poland to start thinking and acting to join? Well, first, we see that... Uh, the main problem of the, of, the, uh, of the main economic problem of the Eurozone, which is divergence, structural divergence, uh, is being tackled. Uh, of course, it's easier to mitigate the problem when the economy is growing, like now. But I look at this uh, main structural problem of the Eurozone as the um, key driver of reforms. Well, if we cannot have a fiscal union, a full-fledged fiscal union, well, then let's think about a banking union. Banking union is there, from this point of view, of course, to provide private capital flows to replace public capital flows. Well, if it does not happen, or it, if it happens only partially, then let's try capital union difficult in the European circumstances, but, but still uh, a, a promising path uh, 
for the future. Well, then we have the problem of how these initiatives are being implemented. Um, my uh, predecessor my, uh, the, the, the discussed the issue of banking union and, and its uh, elements. I think it's very important how these elements are being implemented. Take one thing, bank resolution. Um, well, it makes a huge difference whether you follow, it may be a, a, little, a small thing compared with the whole uh, European problem, so to say. But it, it makes a big difference whether you tackle bankrupt banks in Spanish way or Italian way. It is about this problem, about risk reduction and risk sharing. The more the Germans, when I say the Germans, I have in mind the whole creditors pack of the northern part of, uh, of European Union, so including Österreich, um, and Finland, and Slovakia, and Poles if we are inside. Um, well, then, um, if we see that uh, the bank resolution as part of banking union is being treated seriously, then the um, willingness to share risk may be higher, may be higher. Well, this is why we think uh, from the Polish perspective that um, as, as complicated as the, the Eurozone project is, it has a chance to, um, to go forward, to strengthen, to tackle the um, main structural issue, as I said, the divergence. But you know, from the perspective of my country, the ultimate argument about joining or not joining the Eurozone, aside from the political argument, is the following. Suppose that we agree with the blackest of all scenarios and the Eurozone collapses. Does it make a cha change? Does it, does it make a change for a country like Poland to be inside or outside? I, I doubt so. We are in every situation, sort of so much attached to the European economy that it basically uh, does not matter. Maybe some financial costs are different, but it does not really matter. A small currency like Polish złoty can only survive in the neighborhood of a huge currency in basically normal times. We are overselling the arguments of uh, having a um, national currency that could allow for exchange rate, exchange, rate adjust, exchange rate adjustment in crisis situation. We had it once in 2008 when the Zwati weakened in the crisis. But we tend to forget that it weakened after two years of enormous uh, strengthening. So it was a bubble that was simply pricked. Now there is no bubble, nothing is going to be pricked. So I think uh, if you discuss, well now the mood is generally optimistic in Europe, but if I may help you with some sort of uh, quota of optimism from a country that is not uh, inspiring optimism recently in Poland, then uh, my role in this panel would be uh, worthwhile, thank you.